Welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show live on Instagram. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I am so excited about today's topic. And if you have been following me for at least the last year, you will know why. So I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to just show up at the airport and hop on a plane to anywhere? I say yes. Yes, yes, yes. So Bridget Scotty, she is the founder and head traveler at WHYM, it's W-H-Y-M. She makes this happen for you, but with a four-star hotel waiting for you when you land. Booyah. WHYM is a surprise destination vacation company that gives you the thrill and excitement. Now those are words that I like. <laughs> Thrill and excitement of a surprise trip backed with the confidence that you'll have a great time. Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay, everyone, I'm going to bring Bridget Scotty. By the way, I mean, is that not the most adorable name ever? Bridget Scotty. Okay, here we go. Bridget Scotty. Here she I had the time to click on every single button. I would wave to you guys. So here we go. Bridget, there she is. <laughs> yes, we did it. We did it. We did it. There, there's always like this awkward, uh, like, is it gonna work? <laughs> is it gonna work? <laughs> Thank you so much for having well, me. Welcome. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, we all all sorts of cool people joining. And what's neat too is that we have people that join from all over the world, yeah. which we're going to talk about traveling all over the world. Yes, yeah, so if you guys want, uh, put in the comments. I want to know where you're from. I usually get a lot of people from Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Okay. I've been to Canada, um, but I have not been to New Zealand or Australia yet. Um, and then I actually get a lot of people from England. Where else are you? Germany, Germany, which is pretty week. cool. <gasps> oh, jealous. My son and his girlfriend went there a few weeks ago, and I just got back from Spain. That, I know. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. I'm based where, in so where are you at now? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. New York is cool. My, uh, well, speaking of another yeah. son, my oldest son used to live in Manhattan. Yeah. So I used to love going to visit mainly to party it up and then be, <laughs> and then I'd go yeah, on I, my merry way. I've, I've been here you know? since I was 18. So I've been here for 15 years. I love it. It's my favorite place in well, the world. Ah, very cool. <laughs> and you look so young. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. And yeah, did you hear what I said about your name? I like I my think name. the cutest it's name. Yeah, I want, like, I want to say it, Bridget Scotty. I just want to, <laughs> Bridget Scotty. So tell everyone a little bit more about how you came up with this brilliant idea. And um, yeah, yes. what, in, yes, so, tell us like more you about said, it. Like said, is a surprise destination vacation company. I, uh, I grew up with a dad who was like an old fashioned traveling salesman. He travels like 250 days out of the year. Mm -hmm. So I would spend a lot of my childhood like on a plane to go meet him in some city and I didn't know that was odd it just was part of kind of what our life was and it gave me what my my parents like right. to call itchy feet like I was always a need to go see a thing go somewhere be somewhere new um and so I grew up traveling and I, I really fell in love with it I fell in love with the idea of seeing places and exploring places and I mean just the uh, feeling of stepping into an airport and knowing that something new is coming whether it's for the thousandth time you've been to a place or the first time, I'm always all about it. Um, so I grew to be that yes. friend who, whenever a friend of mine was traveling, they'd be like, oh, where where should I go when I'm here? And I, I'd give them recommendations. Um, and then a handful of years ago, one of my best friends was turning 25 and he had never traveled before. He mm. you know, didn't come from that life. He, he'd never traveled much. Mm. He'd certainly never traveled on his own, but for his birthday, that's what he wanted to give himself. He wanted to like kind of start that experience and start that portion of his life. And he couldn't decide. And he was asking me for suggestions. We were going back and forth. And after a while, I was like, you know what, Kevin? My birthday present to you is I'm planning your trip. You no longer get a say. You can't decide. You don't get a say. I was like, nice. I'm going to book it. I'm going to plan it. And I'm not telling you where you're going. So that's what I did. I booked. I 
Oh, that is so cool. He was cool. going to go. I, I bought the flights. It. I bought the hotel. Um, and by the time he landed in his destination, I was like, this is a thing. Like, this is a company. I should be doing this. Um, so he came home and I picked his yeah. brain, like what worked, what didn't. And then we, I started the ball rolling and God, that was five years ago. So five years later, we've done thousands of trips all, all over America for thousands and thousands of people. And it's been fun. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. That is so awesome. So is it, um, I mean, do you have like a, they yeah, just set so a budget you go on our website it and you select the dates mm -hmm. you want to travel and your budget. So depending on, you know, we have different budget mm -hmm. tiers, but like a two night trip or a 10 night trip. And you can kind of choose, we do road trips, we do solo travel, we do, you know, couples, group, we even do elopements and vow renewals. You can kind of pick the vibe and then you add it to your cart and then you fill out a survey. And like the survey is legit, it's long. Well, the first page of my survey is grab a bottle of wine or a carton of ice cream and settle in. Like get ready, give me 30 to 40 minutes <laughs> yeah. of your time. Because genuinely, I want to know everything. Like, the only way I'm good at this is if you tell me what you're into. Um, I don't want to have somebody who's like, I'm definitely right. afraid of, of skiing, and then I send you to Aspen. Like, that would be just terrible. Uh, so, yeah, we ask all, <laughs> yeah. all these questions, and then that's it. You know nothing else. You're fully hands off. Um, you buy your trip, and you let it go, let go. And then seven days before, you get a text from your personal concierge that you have with Wim with a packing list and a weather forecast 24 hours before you get updated uh, forecast and like what time your plane departs from the airport if you're flying and then three hours before two to three hours you find out where you're going you get like, like 10 things to know about the town you're going to a customized playlist to get you in the mood and then when you land you have a full itinerary of activities and neighborhoods and restaurants and we even do additional surprises along the way to kind of like continue out that like reveal experience ah! so like two hours before you'll get a text and be like surprise your concierge has planned you this like just get up and go and go try a thing um and you can follow it all to the letter you can do none of what we recommended like it's just meant to be kind of a bit of a guideline for you so you don't spend your whole trip like sitting in a starbucks googling what to do and wherever you are um that's it yeah, exactly. I, I think too, sometimes it's overwhelming of deciding I agree. where to go and what to do. So much like, I mean, it's great that we have access to so much information now, but it's almost so yeah. much and so overwhelming. Like, I don't know. Like I'm even sometimes on YouTube looking at places to visit. You're no, like, I don't know where all they the go time yet, that we are the know? solution to analysis paralysis. Like there is just an, there's an yes. amazing world that the internet has provided us with lists and lists and lists of things to see and do. Mm -hmm. But the downfall of that is you might miss this amazing mm -hmm. hidden coffee shop around the corner because you didn't look up from your listicle long enough to yes. see that there might be something really cool right here you put in a plan for. And we can't plan for that either all the time, which is why we specifically say like, this is just right. some guidance. This is some you know, you might have a three hour block and we're like, go wander this neighborhood. And we do that very intentionally. We believe that the best things in life can't ever be fully planned. So we're going to give you lots of guide rails, but mm -hmm. fall in love, mm -hmm. go find a thing, go meet a person, go do whatever it is. And just, um, you kind of got to be down for the adventure. <laughs> So it's funny that you said that. So I don't know if you know this, but in the last year I was traveling full time in an RV, right? So I sold everything, jumped in the RV, and people would ask me all the time, where are you going? And I would always say, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm on the no plan plan. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I'll figure it out. And sometimes I would wake up in the morning and be like, you know, let's go. I'm like, and I would just hop in the driver's seat and I would take off somewhere. But that was always the spontaneity of it and the surprises. That was the coolest part. And that's what you remember. You don't remember the same, you know, the, the boring trips. You remember the ones that are exciting. Matter of speaking of RV trip, I took um, my youngest son and his friend on an RV trip across the country years ago. And and I tried to plan some things because they were teenagers, right? And then on the way back, <laughs> I asked them, as I'm like cruising across, you know, Route 66, I was like, okay, guys, I was like, what was your favorite thing that we did? And it was actually mm -hmm. something that we didn't really have planned. It was something that we 
kind of stumbled across, if you will. And they both, they both shouted out. They're like, cliff jumping. And I was like, yeah, but it was, yeah. And it was, and we didn't plan that again. Like we were, we were in Sedona and there was this little trail and we're like, oh, let's go follow this trail. And here, here we are all of a sudden on top I of love this cliff Sedona. and like, let's do it. So I know I love Sedona. Yeah. So that's the, and what makes me, you know, what I love about the whole thing is it gets people outside their comfort zone, which I'm all about getting up. Yeah. Their I, mean, zone. <laughs> I mean, the world is big and there's a lot to see and we only have so much yeah. time to do it. Um, but I also do fundamentally yes. think that like spontaneity is incredible, but you want a level of, of assuredness because time yes. and money are limited resources mm -hmm. and there's only so much you can expend. So um, right. the experience of you doing an RV or I just went to Germany for a couple of weeks and I didn't buy my hotel until I was on a train yeah. to the next city. And, but I, I feel confident uh, doing yeah. that because I am somebody who is such an obsessive planner that I've done enough. Re like I have, I have at least a knowledge base of like, mm -hmm. if I hop on this train to Dresden, I know what that means. Like I, I I'm confident in that, but um, right. Historically speaking, like my background is somebody who is, yes. I'm, a, I'm a spreadsheet person. I'm a list person. I'm very logical. I have, I literally mm -hmm. have a master's degree in risk management. Like I am, I am as, as you know, type A as you can get in a lot of those ways, but I am a believer in like the spontaneity is what's great. And I think that we found a way to kind of give you spontaneity, but also be like, look, you're not going to end up without a hotel. You're not going to end up you know, you might end up somewhere right. you maybe wouldn't have chosen for yourself, or you might even end up somewhere you're like, I never thought I wanted to go here. But what we ask is just you're yep. here now, go explore it. And maybe, maybe you'll come away and you'll be yep. like, I had no idea. I really loved this experience. Um, and that's what we want for everyone. Yeah, I think what a great gift. You know, like to either give to a friend, your children, yourself. What a great like, get it anniversary all. gift. That is so cool. We and love that. We get so yeah. many. We like, you know, we sell gift cards where you can like buy for the full value of a trip or like a couple hundred towards a trip or whatever. Um, we also have people who buy it for their significant other and they're like, we don't want to tell them yet. Like, don't. We actually yeah. had a, tr a woman who went on a solo trip uh, last holiday season, actually. Mm -hmm. um, last January, maybe, I guess. I'm not sure. So anyway, she went on a solo trip and yeah. Yeah. she's from Portland. We sent her to Denver and she had some really specific things she wanted to mm -hmm. do. She's like, you know, I have to go salsa dancing. I have to, whatever. She had some stuff. We're like, all right, we can figure this out. We send her and she was like, I'm really looking to explore. Like, you know, I, she was newly divorced. She wanted a new experience. She's like, I'm just, I want to meet people. I want to mm -hmm. dance. I want to have yes. fun. I wanted the whole nine. And we found some cool places, some underground clubs, and we sent her. And she found a guy. They started dating. And then for their one year ah! anniversary, she bought him a whim. And they went together on a trip that we planned. So we planned them where they met. And then we planned their ah. one year anniversary, um, which was pretty cool. We've gotten to be a part of some really big life moments for people. And that's always really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. See, I've always wanted to show up at the airport and with just like one little bag and Absolutely. actually just pick the next place out to go. Yeah. I've always wanted, which I will do that. I mean, Me I too. That's like a that major bucket list that. item. But That's the concept if, of this company. I want that experience. Yes. If I've done my job right, yeah. that is the exact feeling you get where it's just, you know, half passport, well, yes. half, you know, whatever the joke is, as long as you've got your iPhone and your ID, you're fine. Have yeah. passport, will travel. Yeah. Well, and actually, just kind of going back to what you were saying before about, like, if you didn't have a hotel room plan or something like that, yeah. it's so easy now, too, with the phones. Like, you're not, you're not really without, it's not like 20, 30 years ago where you're like, oh, my God, you actually had to call a travel agent or call the, like, ah, oh, like, there was no way to do that. Now, it's like, you're, it's not that difficult, Right. Um, so is it so just right, travel in the U S yeah, only do trips in the U S and territories, but I am a proponent of international, like go see the whole world. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, we don't do it, but that doesn't yes. mean that you shouldn't. Um, yeah. I hope to someday, I hope we get to expand yeah. globally. Um, we were a pretty young company. We're only five years old and we were scheduled to go international in 2020, but I don't know if you heard, 
there were some things that happened in 2020 that made tra mm. international travel somewhat difficult. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So we <laughs> backburnered it because that was yeah. obviously, it was a great time to run a travel company for a couple years there. Um, and then we were like, well, we'll do it once the world reopens. Um, and then vaccination laws and everything. Yeah, so we're just now, getting we're there. We're happy encouraging people to see the rest of America. It's such a big country and there's so much to see and do yes. in every little corner. Um, and, and oh yeah for sure and yeah the whole rv trip really opened my eyes a lot more um but yeah it's so it really is i have so many books about u.s travel and places to go and things to see and even those funny little things well, you would we, never think i live of, like you know? I, said, I live in new york so for me i can get to london in the same amount of time as i can get to la so i'm somebody who spent a lot of time mm -hmm. leaving the u.s to vacation because I grew up traveling around the U.S. with my dad as like work and I think it wasn't until I was older mm -hmm. and I looked around and I kind of had this more global uh, view that I was like there's so much here I haven't seen like there's so America's gargantuan yeah just this insane landmass with all oh. different types of people and beliefs mm -hmm. and approaches to the world and you know there's so much to see just here and you should go elsewhere like you should see you know and, my trips to Morocco yes. and the UK and uh, my trips to all these places all over the world are very formational, but yes. so are trips where I accidentally stumbled across like the lost baggage center of America. Did you know that's a thing? You can actually visit a building where every piece of lost <laughs> luggage ends up and you can buy the bags. <gasps> it is a wild place. It is. Yeah. I don't really have words for it, but it's yeah, a thing you can do. Yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> that is too So what is your favorite place that you have I mean, New York is New York? my heart. It's my favorite place in, in, in the yeah. world, definitely in the U.S. Um, my running joke is I really want to leave as long as I always know I can come back. Um, I don't think there's anything quite like it. I think it's easy right. to write off a big city like this that it's loud or it's scary or it's overwhelming. But I think what this city specifically does so well is it loves itself my favorite thing of any place in the world u.s or abroad yes. is yes. i love oh. hometown pride i love walking into a city and being like this place loves yes. exactly what it is like nobody talks bad about my guy like this is new yorkers love new york we can complain but don't <laughs> dare say a bad word um if yeah. we take new york off the map though because yeah. i live here um my favorite place is actually newport rhode island i don't know if you've ever been it's oh, utterly oh, beautiful. I am um, not. It you can take a train ride right up the right up the eastern seaboard from New York, and you get dropped into this incredible little town mm -hmm. that's all like mm -hmm. picture perfect J Crew, like rocky beaches, oh. and old mansions from the Gilded Age, and incredible food, and everyone looks like perfectly quaffed, and it's just this like lovely little town that's kind of <laughs> um, stuck in this world of. Uh, history and and beautiful nature i love it i think it's a mm. it's a forgotten gem often but um there's a lot of great towns i mean i have a i have a softness for more than most uh because i, I think everything has yeah. a story i i love little towns like that I actually what about I alaska haven't. i had a <laughs> i was supposed to go to alaska mm -hmm. for my so, friends yeah, i haven't birthday, either and uh a few things got in the way in co during COVID times, um, so mm -hmm. we had to cancel it. But it's high on my list. I would love to see it. I uh, I'm not a boat person. I'm not. A, I'm I'm a city gal through and through. Um, but that is the one ex exception I think I would make because there's so much you can't see unless you take like little boats and little like hopper planes. Um, and I'd love to see it. Uh, yeah. Did you proposal? see the movie? Yeah. Um, what is it? The proposal. Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. I love that little town and the little cafes. Yeah, very oh cool. I have a gosh, friend from Alaska um, and and they speak, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a hometown, right? So they talk about it like I think many people talk about their hometown, like they couldn't wait to leave. And I was like, but there might be some great stuff when you go back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I want to talk more about experiences yeah. versus material possessions, because again, going back to my RV journey, 
And I literally, I mean, for the most part, got rid of everything. I ended up with maybe 12 boxes and, and, and a bin of, you know, photographs or something like that. And I'm all about, you know, using more of your, your finances, your money towards experiencing life because you come into this world with nothing. You will leave with nothing. You're right. And I think it's, I'm hopefully like when I'm on my deathbed, hopefully 50, 60 years from now, I will be thinking about all the cool shit that I did. I'm not going to be thinking about the Pottery Barn couch. I, I just don't care, you know? And I've, even more so gotten to be, I mean, I've always kind of been like that, but even more now because I'm, you know, empty nest, here it is, I'm in my second half of life and most of my audience is in their second half of life. And it's, it's all about just living more, like truly living. No, so yeah. There's been so many that studies that more. say, you know, decade by decade, we change how we approach consumerism and, um, and the idea of where we put mm -hmm. our money and you know historically it was you worked 50 years and you got your gold watch and then it became a generation of you know the, that <laughs> generation of steadfastness raised a generation of the startup life you know of what built the dot-com bubble because they wanted the opposite right. and then the next generation became well that work-life balance didn't exist so work-life balance really matters so we won't own as much it'll be more of that so it's a really mm -hmm. fascinating kind of anthropological look as to like how every generation reacts to their parents' kind of steadfastness or, or however they approach it. And what the real takeaway to me is, is all of that is a reaction to what you saw when you were raised. And I think the number one pullout yes. from that is it doesn't matter if you are, you know, 25 going on your first trip or if you're 75 and you've retired and you've got a bunch to see or you've seen a bunch mm -hmm. and there's still more to go. Like the fundamental answer mm -hmm. is exactly what you said that the only thing that changes your perspective is seeing something new and the best people we can be are yes. somebody who's grown by seeing something that we didn't necessarily know like we surround ourselves in our spaces with the people and the stuff that we're comfortable and we're used to but we become more interesting mm -hmm. people we become better people we become more well-rounded people when you get to meet and see and yes. eat and you know discover different cultures and worlds and ideas and whatever and and there's no way to do that staying close to home um and even if it's going you know three hours away right. and talking to somebody you wouldn't have or if it's going up an ocean away um there's there's no better use of your money or your time than yeah than being a little bit uncomfortable and changing your mind about something yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And you know what? Travel yeah. doesn't have to be expensive. I, I think that there's also that mindset of, oh, you have to save up a ton of money. You do this mm -hmm. one big fancy yeah. trip. You don't have to do that. I mean, actually, my, my favorite trips yeah. have been the very, very simple ones where I've met you know, simple people and eaten simple foods. And yeah. it, it's those surprising ones that I would have never, again, planned. So no, it and doesn't I have to be expensive. Expensive is mm -hmm. obviously relative to what you are looking for, but I don't think travel has to be expensive, and I don't think it has to be a huge commitment. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, a two-week right. safari in South Africa. It can be, like I mentioned, like Newport mm -hmm. stole my heart, and I mm -hmm. hopped on a train from Penn yeah. Station one weekend, went up for two days, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't even know. And that's all yeah. it took. And I've been back since. Yeah. And I, I love it. But, you know, it, there's because we are in such mm -hmm. a space of such a gargantuan con continent and country as a whole, um, it does yeah. lend itself to this exploration. I do admit East Coast allows me train travel and stuff that you don't really get in other parts of the country. Yes. Um, but even something like that, like we had somebody um, not that long ago, they were um, from the South. Um, and we flew them up to, they actually mm -hmm. went to um, Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, Boston. And so we flew them up. They did a few days in Boston, and we had them take the train from Boston to Providence. And they messaged us, like, because they were gone for, like, eight or nine days. And they messaged us, and they are like, we just showed up at the train station. And they're like, we have to tell you, we've never taken a train. Can you help explain it? And that was a moment of, like, oh, my God, of course I can. Because what we told them was, you know, here are your train tickets. You're on track sits. Like, show up here. 
but that was a new experience for them. Mm -hmm. And they were in their fifties, they were well-traveled, but this was just a new experience. And I, and afterwards we talked and they were like, that was something yeah. we would have never booked a train for ourselves to get, because they're from Louisiana. Right. Like that's not right. an experience that they would have had. And that was something so cool that they were like, we didn't think we'd have like a fully new, we didn't know there was a fully new thing to hatch into and yeah. here it was. Um, so I think right. that's something fun. Plus, I, I think you meet the coolest people, though, too. Um, just on my RV travel, like I, and we're still friends today. I met this adorable couple in Sedona. Yeah, and then, what, and what were the chances that it happened to be that two weeks later we saw each other again in San Diego? And yeah, so it's, it's so neat that of what you'll discover, and I think discover yeah. about yourself. And yeah, and speaking of, you know, I, I put a thing on there, maybe it was yesterday, mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book. And a lot of like what my RV journey was, it was a lot of it, like the journey back to myself, if you will. But you'll discover so much about yourself and about life and about people. And yeah, I don't, yeah, what is this? Oh, somebody bought a badge. Thank you so much. Uh, my brother mm -hmm. and I traveled to Tonga, stayed with a friend for a few days, and then slept on different beaches and explored. That's Greatest amazing. trip that's ever. So that's so cool. cool. Right. And that's something it. that is yeah. so much more, like, that's such a better story than a Pottery Barn Tower. It's, it's not, not to show I know. Pottery Barn I know. Tower. I know. Don't get me wrong. Like, my, I love my CB2 They're care. gorgeous. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. A, I'm a, cre a creature of comfort. <laughs> like, I, I love that you did an RV trip. Kill yeah. Like I could never. I am not that person. Yes. Um, yeah. I am. I, I am not. But I plan a trip. I plan a mean road trip. I'm yeah. just not that person. Um. But I think that's yeah. so much fun, right? Like everyone it's has different funny. approaches, and yeah. And even running a company like this has. I'm somebody who in there is very fortunate, but I have traveled more of my life than not. Um. In a way, in at all mm -hmm. at all budgets. Mm -hmm. um, at, you know, at, I have 10 cents to rub together <laughs> and at, I have money for a five-star hotel. Like yep. it, it's been at all levels. Yep. Um, really, mm -hmm. I was fortunate that I was raised in a world that my parents encouraged this concept of wanting to see the world. Um, yep. And I don't think everyone yes. has that. And even if we find it in ourselves later, like it is up to us yep. to, to really nurture that. Um, for me, my parents are very logical people, as am I. But when I turned 18, mm -hmm. they set up a savings account for me. And the rule was I had to put 15% mm. of every paycheck I received from the 18th birthday till the day I graduated. And when I graduated, I would get access to this mm. a checking account, savings account. And I never thought about it because 15% cool. went into cool. that and I never saw that money. So it was like fake money, right? Like I just never saw it. Mm -hmm. I was a teenager. What, what in the world did I know? It went into this account and I never thought about it. And I went straight from high school to college and straight from college to graduate school. And I finished graduate school, mm -hmm. I got my master's on my 25th birthday. So about four months before or so, my parents were like, well, you're going to graduate. Here you go. And I opened up this account and I had worked, I had to work through, through grad school and through college and I had worked multiple jobs. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. I went from being like a broke college kid with like, at one point there was six girls in mm -hmm. one bathroom. Like it was a tight, it was, it was some tight spaces. Um, but all of a sudden at 25 or 24, almost, I guess I opened up this account and I had what to me at the time felt like real money. I was like, holy cow. And I'm sure my parents were like, this allows you to pay down some loans. This is some money to get your first apartment. And I was like, peace. I was on a plane the next day. <laughs> I, gradu I graduated You're like, on my birthday. I got on a plane the next day and I stayed in Europe for two and a half months. I came home when the money ran out and I was like, hi guys, I'm back. Need to figure out how to be an adult. Um, and you know, I'm sure at the time my parents were like, that was not the goal. But <laughs> looking back, though, that's what, that's really <laughs> something that informed who I am and, and changed so much of me. And like literally one of those mm -hmm. days I had friends meet me along my travels. And like there were five girls in a one in one bed in a room in Rome. Like we did it, you know, whatever. But <laughs> it was amazing. It, it's it's some of the best. Um, my mom jokes it's the best accidental parenting she ever did. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, now my par my parents were travelers too. Yeah, so I think that you like you were saying before yeah. about how, it depends on yeah. how you're raised. Like if that's really in your blood to travel, and 
no coincidence. My parents have been full-time oh. RVing for 25 years, but yeah, but they also traveled a lot of the world to France and Spain and Italy, and they did a lot of that stuff. And I think it's, and, and they still yeah. like, what were you saying earlier about itchy feet or something like that? Yeah. My, my mom is like that big time. Like, she's always like, we got to go somewhere. I can't stand it. Now I'm like that. I'm like, okay, let's go. Uh, speaking of in 39 days, but who's counting? I'm going to, <laughs> I know. I'm like, who's counting? Oh, I love uh, Portugal. Madeira, Portugal. I have. Have you been? I love Portugal. Yes. I love Lisbon so much. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. so little, yeah, yeah, Madeira is like a little island. Yeah. So it's, actually it closer is, yeah. to Africa than it is Portugal, but it's part of Portugal. And it is the coolest place. Mm -hmm. I've never been, but I am moving there. So <laughs> like, yeah. And I think what I'm going to do is just yeah. do the 90 day visa thing. Like every 90 days, I'm going to hop somewhere else, mm -hmm. hop, you know, as long as you go outside of the EU. Right. But what yeah. a great excuse. To you got to, uh, right. and, and like I said, you know, we do, Wim only does domestic yep. travel, but I, as a person, encourage mm -hmm. everyone to see as much as you can, however you can. Um, like I said, be it weekends, be right. it two weeks. I also, and this is no shade to somebody who loves it, but like I am never, I'm not a big mm -hmm. proponent of like rinse and repeat a Disney vacation every year or uh, the same trip every year. And again, if that is something that gives you true joy, I'm not here to yuck your yum. But Great. Like, I think that is right. why we Im imagine some things are so expensive because we do these, like big inclusive experiences right. and uh, we don't do all inclusives at whim. Like I want you to talk to people. I want you to be, I also don't do Airbnbs for bluntly right. a very similar reason. I know people often think Airbnbs are like, oh, you live like a local, mm. you don't. Because now you haven't talked to a concierge who can tell you of a mm -hmm. place. You're not going to run into someone in a lobby. You're not going to be in the heart of this area that you can just wander or grab a cab and talk to the driver like an airbnb is a very unique experience but unless you're going with a big group like i love an airbnb for like when we plan like bachelorette parties brilliant fabulous but if it's like right people, that makes more sense not. right in a hotel, yeah hotel, go talk to a person at an elevator bank you know have the have the concierge tell you his favorite taco shop on the beach like whatever it is and uh, mm -hmm. and kind of get to know that i'm also a big proponent that i think nowhere you don't learn the soul of anywhere um, without eating what they eat. So I think whether it's in the US or abroad, yes, um, being adventurous in both your mind and your palate is a huge part of becoming a good traveler. Because yeah. don't say you don't like Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't go to, yeah, oh, you don't go to I New Orleans yeah, and eat at McDonald's. That would, that would have yeah. been so much. <laughs> Even when I was traveling in Europe, I'm like, okay, that's really cool. There's McDonald's here and Dunkin' Donuts, but no, thank you. I'm like, uh, uh I want to eat what they're what they yeah, I'm also eat, which is, I'm a pretty yeah, adventurous. Sometimes they do eat McDonald's. Um, but. Almost no food I won't eat. So give me the weirder the better. Mm -hmm. When I was in Iceland, yep. like I ate puffin <laughs> and horse, and when I was in you know Italy, I ate the fourth stomach of a cow. Oh. And when I was at, like, whatever, let's go, let's let's. <laughs> Because culturally, they thought that this was something that, that is, they found delicious, and it was part that they chose to put on their family tables. So, like, who am I to be like, ew? When like people come to right. America and they're like, you eat what now? Like, you eat, you're gonna tell me you eat a burger again or that pizza? Whatever. Like, go try it. <laughs> so you don't know. Maybe it's absolutely fantastic. I know you'll never know. Exactly. So I want to ask the audience, if you guys will leave in the comment, what is on your bucket list of where you want to go? And then so, um, what about oh, you, Bridget? What's on your bucket my, list? What's like, yeah, what's my, your my next, next one three? I really want to do is Jaipur uh, in India. I've never been to India. Um, oh. Jaipur is supposed to be incredible. Oh. Um, uh, that's, that's really high. I've also never been to Croatia. So I'd really like to do that. Um, and then oh, yeah. I really want to go to yeah. Japan for baseball season. I'm a big baseball fan and I've never been to a game in Japan and oh. I've been told oh. by friends that it is so different. I've been to games in, you know, the U S and Latin America and all these places, but I've never been to it there. And I think it would be a really interesting difference in how you watch that sport. So I think it's yeah. yeah, that is so cool. How about you? What's your three? Interesting. Um, 
Um, I would have to say hmm, Australia. That would be cool. Japan. I've always mm -hmm. been fascinated with their culture. And so I de definitely want to go there. Um, my third is probably, let me think, a Germany. Germany is, yeah, I'm 24% okay. German. So <laughs> I know, right? And the other 76% yeah. is just a, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, Irish, whatever. But yeah, I, I'm excited to experience more of Europe. I've seen a lot of the yeah, US domestic, and there's still so much more I want to um, see though, I'm, which I have a lot of places I still want to see domestically. Also like, so I'm going to Seattle in July for the major, for the baseball all-star game. Cause I, again, big, big baseball oh. fan, um, but I've never been to Idaho. And um, we've sent a bunch of people to Boise oh, um, that's for pretty. the whitewater rafting and like all of this really cool stuff. And Kerr de Aline, we've sent a bunch of people to Kerr de Aline, which is all gorgeous. Um, so after uh, I go to Seattle, I'm going to hop over to Idaho for a week and explore that. I've never been. I, I can't wait. Um, so I, I have lots of places just domestically still that I, I'm very excited to see. I have Alaska high on my list, really high on my list, trying to go. Yeah. Um, and I uh, just did a, last summer I did a California road trip. Um, I've done, I spent more time than I can count in the major cities in, in California, in San Francisco, LA, mm -hmm. San Diego. I've spent <laughs> a lot of time in all of those, but yeah. I kind of never did the middle, <laughs> right? Like central California. I just, again, yes. I've not, I've, I didn't, I'm not a huge road tripper mm -hmm. by nature. So that wasn't a thing I'd ever done. And this summer I was like, we're going to do it. We're gonna go see what's in between. Um, so I did, and that was really fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh someone Bunch said go to Bora Bora. Absolutely beautiful, great. Yeah, I know. Didn't see. see. Did anybody else put on, their, uh, on what's on their bucket list? Um, and thank you for the peeps that bought a badge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay. So, oh, go to Lake Crescent Lodge. So you can take the ferry from Seattle. It's actually kind of even mm -hmm. closer to Canada, to the Canadian border. Um, really, really cool place. My parents, when they started off on their RV journey, um, they ended up kind of like working at different parks. And that place was so cool. I mean, it should be in a movie. And, it, and it's, um, it's just like this neat inn with all these little cabins. It's off this beautiful lake, but I, that's really cool. But Washington's oh, beautiful. Course. I lived in no, Walla Walla, Washington. I've been to Seattle before. I, my thing is, yeah. I don't have many um, yeah. major. I don't have major cities left in the U.S. I've checked all those, so now I'm kind of into yeah, me too. Like, yeah, smaller size cities because I've also done most of the mid size. So I'm pretty good. I just have some of those yeah. like, uh, smaller ones, which I think is going to be a blast to explore. Um, we just did a honeymoon in Washington State uh, a little bit ago. They did a couple days in Seattle. Oh. We did, you know, the Pink Door, which is one of the most romantic restaurants in America. And we did the underground tour, oh. which is always a blast. And we did, and they're into food. So we did this cooking class with this local artist, uh, Salty Seattle. She's amazing. And then we had them rent a car and take the ferry mm. out to the San Juan Islands. And they did whale watching and they stayed in a beautiful little cabin with Champagne and a private fireplace. It was How very fun. fun. It was very indulgent. It was a blast. You know what's nice about that, though, is that you sometimes the stress mm -hmm. of planning the trip is too much <laughs> for a lot of people. And especially if you're not a planner or somebody that wants to take the time to research everything. So it's nice that you can literally just go, here you go, Bridget. No, I you think you figure it out. You know? I joy out of planning a trip. And so why are you doing it? Like, it, yeah. look, here's my thing. <laughs> yes. I do admittedly live in a city where we love, we love to, you know, uh, export a, a job. Like, I push a button for dinner. I push a button to get my laundry done. Like, we just, we are a big believer yes. in outsourcing. Um, and I think there's a bunch of good reasons for that. Uh, but one of the best is we all have very different skill sets. I am not going to ever be the person who is right. good at, like, I don't know, uh, hanging a television set. I'm very, I'm like 410. I can't reach to right. do that. Like, I know it will go badly. I feel no shame <laughs> in outsourcing that as a skill set that somebody else possesses. Why would we ever be like, I have to do, I have, like, I have to plan the vacation. And specifically, 
-hmm. not to over, but like women often take on a lot of what I like, you know, unpaid labor in a home, mm -hmm. especially when they have children or, yeah. Yeah. or whatever that looks like for them. And a vacation mm -hmm. should be something that the family's right. excited to do, to, excited to do it together. And oftentimes yes. it's like the, the, the family, um, takes this on. And then what that really means is one person mm -hmm. takes it on. And so one person is out here be it a mom, a parent, <laughs> exactly. A person, whomever, the, whomever the person is, this one person has now taken on this weight of, of pleasing all of these people. And then it's no longer fun for them. And why would we ever expect more right. unpaid labor from people who already do so much of it? Like you've got, we just had a trip come yeah. up and they're like, I have four kids and they like nothing all the same. And I can't do it. Can you help? And I, I got you. Like we will yeah. figure it out. We will find a skate park for your teenager. We'll we'll find a shopping street for this this person. Well, like you shouldn't be expected to be the single source of joy for everyone. Let us help. right. Yeah. Well, because then you don't enjoy it as well. Even when you end up going on the vacation, you're like worried about okay, I got to do this for so and so, and that person make that person happy. Instead, it's like okay. Absolutely. This is the itinerary. This is yeah, we get a lot of big family trips, yeah. like parents and four kids or whatever. And and they're mm -hmm. like, we just, we can't, I can't, I can't have the fight with the, like we had one recently we sent to Denver and um, it was like the one daughter was like, I want to go horseback riding. And the other daughter's like, I only want to do musical theater. And the son, like, so everyone had like extremely different stuff. And so like one of the kids was really into sports and one of the kids, whatever. And so we, we were mm -hmm. like, look, you're not all gonna agree on a thing but that's why tonight you have tickets to see the Rockies, right. and tomorrow right. you have tickets to see moulin rouge and we're gonna all do it together and because they're pre-bought oh. right like the kids aren't gonna whine as much because it's like you know your turn was last night this turn next night everybody's down and we even are big fans of putting option blocks and be like look you guys don't have to uh -huh. you know they were all older they weren't like six they were all like teenagers mm -hmm. um in high school and college yeah. and i was like here's options like, if you want to split up, if one parent and some kids want to go do this and one wants to go do this, great. It's vacation. Go have fun. Go indulge. Go enjoy. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's the, yeah, that's the point of vacation, right? <laughs> so tell us more about where we can find you and how sure. we can get Sorry. started like on this weird cleaning our vacay. Like the sunset during this call. I know. And now I feel like I'm like <laughs> strangely okay. moving. I apologize You're like, for being like this weird floating head. <laughs> yeah, right okay. here. Like. Just go right there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can find us at Whim Travel. Um, so we are at on a whim, but we spell whim, W H Y is in yellow. Whim. Um, so, so we're on a whim.com. We're at Whim Travel on social media. You can, you know, we're loud. We're kind of everywhere. Um, if you're looking for holiday gifts, we love a gift card. We love a we love an experience. Mm. No, no one needs Oh, that's good. No one needs another thing under the tree that is like going to be a re-gifted item. Like dad doesn't want another tie. I promise you yeah. dad doesn't want another tie. Buy him and your mom a vacation. <laughs> or like money towards a vacation. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, at any combination. Um, yeah. yeah you know, there, exactly. Um, we have, we're a 24 hour business. You know, we have live chats. We have texts. We are mm. a team of obsessive travelers and planners. Yeah. Like we want to talk to you. We want to answer your questions. So like, there is no dumb question for it. Like we have so much information on the site and then feel free to ask us whatever you want. That's so awesome. And you guys, if you're watching us live, I think it's if you click on the very top and then I think your name pops up there. So you can follow her on Instagram there. And then, yeah, your website's great. Very, very cool. Yes. Well, thank you so much. This is awesome. Now I've, I've oh, this really, was a yeah. Pleasure. I gotta travel when you get back more. from Portugal, Even let us know. we'll plan something fun for you. <laughs> Yes, I know. So nice. I know. All right, thank you so much. Bye, Bye. everyone.